Hi, welcome to the Ecamm channel. This is John. Today we are going to discuss the general shape of the battery discharge curve under constant current conditions. At slow rates, the shape of the discharge curve is dictated by thermodynamics. Basic knowledge of thermodynamics and a phase diagram is assumed. Here we have a hypothetical case of a material M undergoing lithium insertion to form lithium M. The discharge curve goes through three sloping regions and two plateaus as the state of charge goes from 100% to 0%. On the materials level, SOC 100% represents the pristine material M and 0% stands for lithium M. The discharge signature depends on the number of phases and solid solutions during the material composition change and is rooted in the phase diagram. As labeled in the graph, in the sloping regions there are only one phase, alpha, beta, or gamma. In the plateau regions, there are two coexisting phases. In the hypothetical phase diagram, this process is presented as the dashed line. The phase diagram provides details of the phases that the material will exist in as functions of composition and temperature. When temperature and pressure are fixed, the phases are dictated by compositions. In the alpha, beta, and gamma phases, the composition varies without changing phases and behaves like solid solutions. In the alpha plus beta region, the material goes through phase transformation from the composition of lithium AM in the alpha phase to the composition of lithium BM in the beta phase. The composition in the individual phases will not change, but the fraction of beta will increase as the overall lithium composition increases. A similar idea applies to the beta plus gamma region. The Gibbs phase rule describes the plateau behavior. When temperature and pressure are constant, the degree of freedom is equal to the subtraction of the number of components and the number of phases. The degree of freedom describes the number of independent intensive variables that can be varied independently. In our case, it's the potential. The number of components is the number of chemically distinct ingredients of a phase. The combination of components must describe all the possible compositions of the phase. In our case, we have lithium and M. For the number of phases, we can read from the phase diagram. Going back to our example, in single phase regions, we have two components and one phase. The subtraction is one, so we have a degree of freedom of one which means potential can vary. In two-phase regions, we have two components and two phases. The subtraction is zero, and therefore the potential should be invariant. Now we understand why we have plateaus in some regions and varying potentials in others. Next, we will discuss the origin of the potential profile. Potential of a battery is determined by the difference of chemical potential of the two electrodes over Faraday's constant for lithium insertion compounds. The chemical potential difference can be described by the difference of chemical potential of lithium in the respective phases. Assuming we have lithium metal as the anode, which is noted as mu lithium zero, the chemical potential of lithium in the insertion compound is expressed as mu lithium LIXM. If you want to learn more about this equation, please refer to our video Potentials in Electrochemistry. This chemical potential information can be obtained from the Gibbs free energy curves shown on the right. A phase diagram presents the phases with the lowest Gibbs free energy at a specific temperature, pressure, and composition. In regions 1, 3, and 5, we have the lowest energy determined by the Gibbs free energy curves of phase alpha, beta, and gamma. In regions 2 and 4, the lowest energy is determined by the tangent lines between the Gibbs free energy curves of phases alpha, beta, and gamma. In these regions, two phases coexist. The chemical potential of lithium in the various phases can be determined by drawing the tangent line of the Gibbs free energy curves and calculating the intercepts at the composition of pure lithium. For example, for the alpha plus beta region, we can obtain mu lithium. And for the beta plus gamma region, we can obtain mu lithium prime. The chemical potential of lithium in lithium metal is the highest value the chemical potential can reach. To better illustrate the concept, I made a video here that only included the beta and the beta plus gamma regions. The Gibbs free energy curves are approximated as parabolas. As the composition increases, the chemical potential of lithium also increases. 
I keep track of this chemical potential as a function of composition in the right plot. As you can see, in the single phase region, the chemical potential varies continually, and in the two phase region, the chemical potential stays constant. Due to the equation above, the trend of battery discharge curve and chemical potential is flipped. It represents only a small section in the overall potential profile in our example, but you get the idea. I hope this video helps you understand the different features in the battery discharge curve and their origins. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. The main figures in this video are from reference 1. The method of calculating potential from Gibbs free energy curves is from Professor Athena Hiley's graduate solid state electrochemistry course offered at Northwestern University, accessed via joint undertaking of an African Materials Institute, also known as Chuami. The videos in our eCam channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.